Hello there. It's Nancy Reynolds, Stampin' with Nutsy. It is good to see you. As you can see in the picture, that's the card we're making. And here I am. How are you today? Sorry I'm a minute or two late. I needed to finish setting up. Um, we had a mouse in the house last year. Actually, I've had it for a couple of times, a couple of years. But last, but I finally had Biobug. And they've come and taken care of my mouse problem. And my technician is here, so I wanted to say hi because he's moving. And I wanted to be able to say goodbye. Anyway, oh, there's Miss Olivia. She knew I turned the camera on, and so here she is. Hopefully she'll stay off and out of the workspace, which is where I'm going to take us right now is down to the workspace. There we are. I just wanted to show you the card. Now, as we all know, water and cards do not go well together. And I sp spilled a little water on the card last night. So we are going to remake this card instead of using other products. Oh, I don't see my Wink of Stella, but I see that I... So, we all know how much I love Wink of Stella. Yes? Yes. Just a second. I don't know if you can see, but I felt that the deers deserved to be sparkly. So I wink of Stella to every single deer. So we'll just put this over here. I have a couple of questions for you. I hope, hi Gladys, it's good to see you. Um, I, I'm got it. I have everything cut to make the card exactly the way I made it with white as my, my little sections on the card right here. But I also thought it might look really nice and show off the designer series paper even better if I did it in black. So while I get started making the centerpiece, I hope you'll tell me if you would prefer black or white. And here is our centerpiece. This is a six wheel pin, pinwheel card. The center, this piece, is four and a quarter, no, four and a quarter by four and three quarters. And then it is scored every three quarter inches. So it's scored at three quarters of an inch, one and a half, two and a quarter, three, three and three quarter, and four and a half, with this little tiny bit left over to um, fold under and secure with a little bit of glue. So let's go ahead and do that piece first because this is the base of our card. Very important. I've already scored a piece of paper, of cardstock, and I'm gonna put the measurements right here. I'll also put them in the, in the description after this is over. So whenever you make, oh, I know what, here's my tip. I think that it's really important if you want to remake a card that's a fun fold, that you have a template. And so that's what I have here. It's a very simple template. It tells me the size of my pinwheel center, where to score it, the mat size, and the designer series paper size. Sizes, I should say. So I recommend making templates. And we're just going to reinforce all of these score lines. I had already started folding them, but I think if they're reinforced, it will hold up a little better because you're going to flatten it to put it in an envelope. And yes, this is mailable. If you look at this one and you flatten it, it goes right inside its envelope. Now, it might take a little more postage because it is a little bulky, but and there's a fair amount of cardstock that we're using. An idea that you could use if you wanted to to make it a little less heavy is instead of using cardstock, you could use designer series paper for this piece. Okay. Hi, Cindy. Nice to see you. So I have a question for everybody, Cindy. I made, we're remaking this because I dropped water on it. And while I don't see any problems, 
I want to mail out the winner of the drawing. I want to mail a really nice one that didn't have any water on it. I was a little careless last night. Anyway, so I'm remaking the same card with the same designer series paper, but this piece that goes in here, I've cut white so we could make it with the white, but I thought it might look really nice with the black, so I also cut black. So let me know what you would like or you think you'd like to see. Okay, here we go. A little bit of glue along the edge. Oh my goodness. Let me take my tea pin. I keep my tea pin in my Tombow glue so that I can, and I tuck it under, I must tuck it under this side. It usually tucks very nicely under the plastic, right in there, to keep the glue flowing. I might have a little bit much. Got a little glue holder, so I don't have to put the lid back on, because I think that's the adhesive we're going to use today, is Tombow glue, for most things. I also have glue dots, they're in the drawer, and I'll pull those out. But glue gives you just a bit of wiggle room. Better to flatten it as you're finishing up pressing down the glue. And there is our base. So what we're going to do Oh, hi, EJ. Nice to see you. So now we come. What do we think? Are we going to do it in white? Or are we going to do it in black? Let me show you with the designer series paper. So here we have the designer series paper. See, I just think that pops on the black. Whereas it didn't on the white. It's not bad, but it doesn't pop. So I'm leaning toward black unless somebody thinks they would really rather see white. No one has an opinion? Then we're going with black. So the first thing I'm going to do before putting these on, and here's the designer series paper. Black, thank you, Cindy, we agree. We are on the same wavelength. Now, Olivia has, has thoughts. Black. Good. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you, EJ. We all are thinking alike. I am impressed with that. So let me... I'm not sure what Olivia wants. I think she wants to be on my lap in the middle of what we're doing. But I'm thinking that would make it very hard to put this card together. So here we are, there's one, oh, that's the thing, sometimes when you have it all lined up and you put it down with glue it can slip a little. So let's try that again. I do, I'm going to apologize for Olivia, she likes to be the entire center of attention. Okay, there we go. Brush the little cat hair off of them. I think these deer are so pretty. I really like this designer series paper. And you know what I'm going to do? Maybe it's my eyes. Let's let's scrunch that just a little bit. Hope it's not my cutting. There we are. Oh, she wants black too. I think you must be right. My thoughts are that it would be a lot easier to put the Wink of Stella on the deer while it is on the paper flat. So often I don't think of that. 
Okay, little wink of Stella on the deer. The good news is there are four sections of paper with deers on them. And these are four inches by two and an eighth inch. There we are. Scooching over. It is, must be my eyes today. That looks better. So how is everybody? What you drinking today? I just finished my water. And I think my coffee's almost gone too. Okay. I really do think the black really sets off this paper. Wish I had thought of that earlier with the first one. Down a little bit. And Wingo Stella the deer. It is so seldom that I think ahead and do the Wingo Stella before the card is all put together. And I'm, I'm known for, oh, you just made coffee. I'm coming to your house, EJ. That sounds good. Um, I'm uh, sticking my Wingo Stella under things so I can finish up putting Wink of Stella on. Definitely not planning ahead. Okay. Looks like this one got cut cut just a hair bigger than the others, but we're going to go with it. I have loved this paper. It's part of the Magical Meadow Suite, or the Winter Meadow Suite, with the Magical Meadow bundle of stamps and dies. Okay, that's all of our deer, and I have another plain one. So what I decided, because I liked the deer so much and I wanted them to stand out, I decided not to put any decoration on them. That they're kind of a standalone. Okay. Now if I stop and think, this side right here is going to get our specialty DSP. But I'm so afraid of putting it on wrong and having it um, a water and coffee, Cindy. That sounds good. Wish I had filled up my water glass. Let's put this on and then we're going to put this specialty designer series paper and then we'll do our decorating because I have more questions to ask you about how we're going to do it. So this is a card that's going to move. And now that I think about it, I think I'm going to grab a Bataran tape. Cards with a lot of movement can be a little difficult. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm put this on this side. We'll have a double Taran tape. And I think it always works easier for me. I just kind of burnish down with my fingernail. You can use your bone folder if you want to. But um, this comes off pretty quickly and easily as long as it's burnished. So here we go. It goes just almost to the fold line 
that scored line where we folded. And now it's well established in two spots. So let's do a deer the same way. We should be able to get three on before I have to turn it. I just want to make sure that this holds up and doesn't fall apart. And it's also nice when I have actually put them on so that the patterns and the trees are all going the same direction, all the way around. Okay, here's our second one. Almost to the fold line, very close. Let's see if we can get a couple more. Let's do one more deer. This could also be done with glue, but glue will take a little bit of time to dry and you don't want this moving around while you're trying to work on it. It goes there, so it goes on this side. Spatially, I occasionally have a bit of a problem. So it's best that I check every time. Anyone else have that problem? Or is it just me? Okay, here we are. What's your weather like? It is absolutely beautiful here, but it is definitely cold. It was 40 degrees this morning, so I decided it was time to pull out a sweater. But we've got sunshine, and in the Pacific Northwest, we do like having sunshine. Although, I am glad we had some rainy weather. We had a couple of storms roll through, because believe it or not, we are in a drought, or we were. Who would have thought the Pacific Northwest would have drought conditions? Okay, there we are. And now we have two more to do. Let's turn this one over. We've got two more of our little, our cute little deer. Cloudy and cool, Gladys. That's it is fall, it's just, sometimes our fall is very wet. And so it's, so here's what happens in a drought. Some of us have weeping willow trees. And who would ever think that they have to go out and water huge, gigantic weeping willow trees? Well, I did not think I should go out and water them because we have to pay for the water that we use. So I had one huge branch fall down and it, it was massive. It, it, was, it, was, it was just huge. It fell into the second weeping willow tree who was also thirsty. And once they're, because they take care of so much water Great for wetlands. And that field is a wetland in the summer, in the winter, fall and winter. I like to call it Lake Reynolds on that side of my driveway. Anyway, once they dry out, they get brittle. They're no longer supple and they break. So when the huge branch fell into the second tree, it took out the field side of the second tree. Oh, EJ, you're in North Carolina and it's 73. Ooh, that does sound good. I would like to visit North Carolina someday. Anyway, I had $1,800 of tree service this month because they had to come and cut down those two willow trees. I have another one, but those two 
Oh, Cindy, 87. That's a little warm for me. I'm not used to that. So here's our card. And now we'll put on the specialty DSP, which again is four inches long, but it's only one and three eighths inches wide. And the tree service, still with my trees, because I love weeping little trees. They're so pretty. And they are not anywhere close to my septic system, which is very important because their root system is enormous and they can cause a lot of problems. So there are my beautiful trees. Two of them have almost nothing on the field side and they hang, so this is my driveway, they hang all the way over my driveway, just spanning it. And so they are, they are not that big any larger any longer because they had to balance the weight a little bit. So they don't hang over, majestically hang over the driveway anymore. I guess I should be happy that they didn't block the driveway. Ooh, 72, 87 to 72, that is a big drop. A very big drop. That's hard to adjust to for me. Big differences like that. Okay, here we go. So I'll show you these papers. And in just a minute, I've got the samples of them sitting here to show you. Okay, one more. Now, can you believe how easy this is to put together? It doesn't look easy. And when it was in a, a swap, I thought, oh, oh my goodness, how am I going to do that? Okay, I'm moving the directions, the measurements. Well, that just sits for just a minute. I'm going to show you the paper I'm using. This is the Winter Meadow DSP. The deer is on two halves of the paper, the bottom and the top with a kind of a this color in between, which is pretty. And I love this, that the, the spray comes up from the corner of the paper and down from the other corner. And I would love to show that to you, but I have used most of my paper up. Then this is the Snowflake Magic, and this is the one we used. This is very pretty. It's kind of subtle, but there are snowflakes in there. Oh, there it is. I caught that. And we're going to use this one for our die cuts. But I wanted to tell you that you can also stamp on this one. The silver resists, so you'll have um, a blueberry bushel I used the other day, and it was really pretty. And this is our stamp set in our dies. And you see there are dies that don't have coordinating stamp sets. And that's what I cut out of that pretty paper. I think... These are, these are the ones I'm going to use. I'm not sure. So I cut two. And then I cut one of each of the others. So you can see there goes a lot of silver in it. But there's also white. The next step is our... Oh, here's my scrap paper. Stamping. And I only stamped on two. I did May This Season of Sparkle Bring Joy and Delight. And the colder weather brings us together. I'm going to stamp those and use the new punch. I really like the Modern Noble punch. But I've got a little bit of a, a change up. Instead of just having it plain, I cut, these were scraps of the paper. Now they look like kind of wine glasses, sort of. But what I did was I cut 
edges off to go on each side of our, of our sentiments. So I'm going to set those aside. And I just wanted to show you these because I thought they turned out kind of funny. I will keep them for other little bits and pieces. So my thoughts are is the sentiments didn't stand out because I like to stamp with on them or around them. And so I am going to stamp with Tuxedo Memento Black. Since we've got the black outline, I think that'll tie that black in really nicely. So I'm going to do one. And then the other sentiment. The colder weather brings us together. I'll put that right here. One for each side. Put the top on this before I get it on me. And then I think I want to use, since this is going over the top, I'm going to use this little leaf, leafy in Pebbled Path, but I'm going to stamp it off twice. And then I'm just going to put one below and do it again. And one above. Hmm. Well, that's not perfect, but these aren't photopolymer stamps, so they're hard to line up again. And then I'm going to use Lost Lagoon and the little ferny with the blueberries on it, with the little berries on it. And I'm going to stamp it off twice. That might be a little lighter than I really wanted. And I'm just going to come in and put this here and do. So this is third and fourth generation stamping. And I want to talk a little bit about cleaning stamps because some of these colors are so dark. And while I use my chamois a lot, what I have noticed, oh, while I'm talking, let me work. What I have noticed is they have a little bit of residue left of the ink. This one goes sideways. Let's see. That looks good. And they look like this. I don't know if you can tell, but that is not a totally clean stamp. Oh, I'm missing a light. Thought it was a little dark. It just has a little bit of leftover. So I took my stamps today, not this one. And instead of my chamois, I brought out the stamp and scrub. Wet is on the right side, dry is on the left. And especially with red rubber stamps, this also gives them a little conditioning. So I took a spritz of just plain water, spritzing, kind of like that. And then a spritz of this is Stampin' Mist. So we sell that and the Stampin' Scrub. Now I've already done this, so that was just for to let you know. And then I take my Stamp and I just really rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it to clean it. Get all that little ink residue. It gives it a nice little conditioning, so your rubber stamps are going to last longer. And it is cleaner than it was. I don't know if it catches on the camera or not, but in real life, it looks much better. And so that's something that I don't do all the time. But every once in a while, they just need a really good clean. All right, here we go. 
I am going to take, now I use my modern oval to cut these out. And I just want the tiniest little bit of color showing. There we go. Just a little thin, a thin edge. And of course with the glue, it gives you a little time to move it around if you've messed it up. I'll put it on there. But I think this will set out just a little, set it off just a little bit once we get it on the, on the card. And this one also needs, needs to look pretty. There we are. Did you know that your Tombow glue, so if you didn't want to have a mess, because I got a little bit extra on there, and I think I'm going to wipe some of that off on my silicone mat. My goodness, I had a stowaway. You can let this dry and it becomes clear, and then you can use it as almost like a glue dot. Okay. There we are. And so what I did is on the plain without the deer pieces is I took and I just put And I like it with the silver and white paper, so I'm glad I did that. I take a little tear and tape, no, seal plus, put it on, put my branch on, and you don't want a lot of dimension on this because there's a lot on this card to begin with. So we'll just put, now what do you think? The silver might have shown off a little bit better on the card than this paper does, but I think the sentiment looks so much better with the mat around it. And here's our other one. Let's see. This one had a lot of silver on it. So maybe I'll put this on. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Cindy. I don't really want all of this at the bottom. Maybe I will cut right there. Or right there. And put more of the seal plus on it. Hold everything down. And there we have it. And I don't like this, so I'm just going to come in and I'm going to trim it. There we are. Our card is done. We just have our envelope to decorate because you know the rule. A pretty card deserves a pretty envelope. 
and I'm going to be stamping off. So I am going to wash this one on my stamp and scrub because I want to use, oh, maybe I'll just use, I'll just use Lost Lagoon instead of Pebbled Path. Tap will be fine. I'm glad they brought back Lost Lagoon. I like this color. And that over the side. And I have a few things to tell you. There's some specials going on. There, a couple of generations. Oh. So what I should have done on the front, because I had it off the edge, and so that's why there's a little more color there, is there, re-inked it. And there's our card. I received one of these as a, uh, the dimensions EJ will be in the description after this is all over. I will just go in and type them there. Um, I like to look at the picture, the pretty, there, right there. I received one as a, in a swap. Here it is. Isn't this pretty? So feminine. And look at that. One small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day. That is a good one. So that was my inspiration for doing this, is that swap. And I wanted to show you, this is the card I did for the swap. I used the earthen elements, and I just, I loved it. Then the specials. World Card Making Day is coming up, and Stamping Up is having a, an event. It's free. You just need to go on and register, and then you'll get an email and be invited to come and watch and, and share in the fun card making. I am having an event. It's a Zoom online retreat. There's 18 Craft Along demonstrations. There are nine of us presenting, and... Even if you couldn't come on the 6th and 7th, I, I just emailed out a schedule and the PDF to the participants the registra who registered. It's got videos for every project. And they're in actually more in-depth, mine are anyway, because we have a very limited time to present. And so we hurry up and everything's die cut. But there's... There's more walk through how to make the card in the videos, so it's good to have that. Plus, you've got the written directions. So I, there's still time to register if you're interested. And there is Stampin' Up! is 35 years old. And so they had an anniversary, 35th anniversary celebration all year long. And they're topping it off starting, I think it's October 3rd, with a joining special. And you get 35% off the starter kit. So that makes it 68 something. Off the top of my head, I don't have that number. Or you get 35% more. You spend your 90, you pay $99 and you get, instead of 120, you get, I don't know how much. 35% more product. Plus, and this is a first ever, we all pay as demonstrators to go to on stage which is our, our annual convention. There's um, business training. There's lots of fun. There's projects. There's stamp-alongs. You learn a lot of, um, about the company. I really enjoyed the section on the art, how they make our beautiful designer series paper. That was really interesting. So that they're giving anyone who registers in October, they're giving a free registration to on stage and it's um, virtual this year again on the computer and it is it's worth going to I, I really appreciate it and so that will be free for anyone who joins in the month of October and the date of that is November I'm going to say 11th I'm pretty sure that's it 
So if you're looking to join Stampin' Up, I would love to have you and welcome you on my team, the Nutsy Stampers. It helps to be nuts, a little nutsy to join. Yes, it does. But it's not a requirement. I'm nutsy enough for all of us, right? So that said, I think that's it. Um, next week, how about some autumn leaves cards? I love that set. And I think the paper's coming back in soon. I'll have to check, double check the date. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I've enjoyed chatting. Um, probably on Monday, I'll take everybody's name who's commented or shared, and I'll put it in the little random wheel and pick a name to send this card with the black. I like it better, by the way. I think that really is makes it stand out. The black card, cardstock, and I will send it off to you in the mail. So until then, two o'clock next Friday, I believe. And if it's any different, oh, I'm gonna put it. In, I'm gonna put a little note in the my Facebook page anyway. So good to see you. I'm gonna say goodbye and happy stamping. <laughs>